Good day viewers. Today we have a 2017 Chevy Silverado. It's got the 5.3 I believe. And it's got a lifter or a valve problem on the right bank. It was at the dealer and they quoted them several thousand dollars to replace the lifters on the right side. I'm hoping it's just got a collapsed lifter and maybe a bent push rod. Uh, we're going to pull the valve cover off and have a look, but I wanted you to listen to the cadence of the engine while it's cranking. It's got a dead miss in it. So I'm putting the engine in clear flood mode by holding the gas pedal to the floor. That'll disable the fuel injectors. And listen to the way it cranks. That's a dead sign of a, a bad cylinder, lack of valve opening or closing or one or the other. So we're gonna pull the valve cover off and have a look. So there's the valve cover off and if you look inside this valve cover it's obvious that this engine has been maintained very well. There's no evidence of sludging, no dirt, no debris. The inside of the engine is pristine. This thing's got 105,000 kilometers on it. Now the push rod's missing in here and I gather that the dealership took the push rod out. I think they said it was bent. So that's number four exhaust. This is number two, this is number four. This is exhaust. Yeah, that's exhaust, that's intake. So we're gonna pull the rocker arm off and have a look at the lifter and see if it is in fact collapsed. So I put a push rod in there and the lifter doesn't seem to be collapsed right now because there's no clay in it. So I'm gonna start it up on four cylinders and see how it runs. And the lifter doesn't appear to be collapsed right now. That's interesting. Let's put the valve cover back on and see how it runs. Well, there it is running. No more misfires. No more shake. No more ticking. We're going to do an electronic delete using EFI Live of the uh, active fuel management, displacement on demand, whatever the name you want to call it, in this system to prevent those lifters from collapsing again because I think that's where the problem lies. When the lifters collapse and then they don't latch correctly, uh, it causes the push rod to get bent. So I'm going to use EFI Live to read the tune from this vehicle. It's an E92 controller. I've got a clean battery charger on it. Got the key on. Obviously not running. And we're going to read the program that's in this thing. pick up when we get to the end of this. So we're about halfway through downloading the file from this thing now. One uh, disclaimer here, I don't condone tuning to dis defeat emission control devices, but this uh, active fuel management or cylinder management system is very problematic on these engines. And I, I don't see a problem with uh, deleting this electronically, as I said, or fixing tire calibrations you can do that with this software as well but I do not condone defeating emission control devices so that's the programming copied out of the controller and then we gotta turn the key off for 20 seconds so before we do any editing we're gonna save a copy of this tune use the customer's name as a file name and then we're going to edit it and it'll be under engine operation active fuel management and we just highlight this and say no and that's basically it you can once you turn that to no, then it disables active fuel management like you're in tow haul mode and it never runs in four cylinder mode again. So I have to buy a, a VIN unlock license from EFI Live if I don't have one and then we'll send the file back into the ECM. Since I haven't done any tuning to this computer yet, it needs to be licensed before we can do the flash. So we're going to license it. Might have to cycle the key one more time. OK. 
Okay. Yeah, got to cycle the key. So now we're going to do the calibration flash. Again, we got a clean battery charger on it. We got a laptop hooked up to uh, 110. Be extra careful not to modify or move the programming cables because we could corrupt an ECM in the process. So we'll pick up when we get to the end. So we're almost at the end. Now there is a uh, device that you can buy to plug into the DLC that will do this, but it's about 300 US to do that. I gotta cycle the key again. We're gonna sh shut down recording. So that's it. That's all that's involved in doing this. We're going to exit this program. We're going to start up the Snap-on Scan tool to uh, have a look at some data and look at misfires. So I'm starting up the Snap-on software now on my Veris Edge here. Uh, yes, I'm using a Snap-on Scan tool to do this programming because it's basically a tablet. It's running Windows 7 and that's good enough. Let's get full screen here. Uh, Chevy should automatically detect the VIN. 109,000 kilometers, that's a shame GM. Let's do a code scan and see if we generated any network codes by doing the flash programming event. Yeah, lost communication with trailer brake control module. Uh, current DTC. Let's see how many controllers this talks to. Six so far. Should be about 18, I think. Seven, nine, ten. Sometimes it takes a little longer when it tries to pull a computer that doesn't exist. 10, 13, 14, 16, 17, 19. 20. So 20 controllers. So we got a network code in the ABS, network code in the radio, circuit voltage below threshold in the radio. And that's basically it. Now all the maintenance monitors have not run in past. So we're going to do a network code clear. Key on engine off. That should be fairly quick. I think it listed as 20 controllers, but one is the ECM or PCM in, in generic mode, so it's only 19. Now, yeah, shows this is 20. Okay, well, let's go into the engine controls, data, and let's look at misfire data when we start it up. Well, cylinder 2, misfire, has no misfires. It's counted a total of 4 misfires, but that's nothing. No active misfires. Cylinder 1, 3, 5, and 7, 2, 4, 6, and 8. I'm going to take it for a road test. But this customer may have dodged a big bullet here so far. Uh, if that lifter fails again, which well, I don't want to jinx it, but I highly doubt it. If it doesn't collapse, it won't have to pump up again. So maybe we got lucky this time. So maybe that trailer brake code was uh, nothing to do with programming. There is a service trailer brake message on here. I haven't taken it for a road test. They just jumped in it. And there's no misfires on it now. So the misfire data is perfect. Let's go into the trailer brake control module and see if we got communication with it. This does have factory trailer brake. So let's see. Trailer control interface module. I've had problems with these things before. Display codes. No communication with it. And I'll bet you one of the modules is complaining about that, like the instrument cluster. Let's do another network code scan. Oh, 
or the ABS. Yep, lost communication with trailer brake control module. Well, that's interesting. We'll have to discuss that with him. Maybe that'll be another video. But let's take it for a road test and see how it runs. So I'm driving into the sun here. Wow. I'm watching the uh, active fuel management display where it says V8 in the bottom right hand corner of the uh, DIC. And right about now it should have switched to four cylinder mode. And as you can see, it's not doing that anymore. The truck is running perfect. So we'll talk to the owner about the uh, problem with the trailer brake control and see if he wants to have me look into that problem. Thanks for watching. The hazards of driving in the country. Alright, you can get off the road now.